<gasps> oh my god. Sorry to kickstart this video with what you might consider to be bad news, but I'm selling the Abarth. I know what a kind of cliched car YouTuber move. It feels like I've only owned this car for about a week, but I'll be honest, both my kind of lockdown project cars from 2021, they're both a bit of a fail. Uh, the 911 40th anniversary and this Abarth Project Hostel just didn't really work out like I'd hoped as we were launched into a sort of full lockdown here in the UK at the beginning of last year. I was like, great, I've got these two project cars I'm going to really sink my teeth into. But then the world started to open up and take me away from the cars. And I don't think I've driven that thing for four, maybe even five months. And that's not, that's not the way I like to own cars. So the team at Duke of London has just given it a full service. We replaced the dead battery, which died earlier in the summer. And it's now looking, well, absolutely fantastic in that logic. Rosso Fuoco peelable paint and I'm gonna regret it I know I'm gonna regret it because I love these cars but if you watched last week's video you'll know that I have some big plans for 2022 and I need the cash <laughs> Anyway, hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Today's video is about a red car, just not that red car, not the Abarth, because I'm heading down to Kudos Restoration, to see how they're getting on repainting my Ferrari 360. for this video to be a kind of garage update, but whilst I'm in this car, I might as well remind you about it, just in case you missed the video at Christmas or you're new to the channel. Uh, the legends at Alexander's Prestige have lent me this Defender 90 for three months. It's kind of the, the ultimate test drive to see if it could be my next daily. I've had the keys to it for about two weeks now, but I haven't really had a chance to start living with it. I went away for a few days at Christmas and then I've been moving home and been juggling the cars around. And if I'm honest, the X3 has continued to be the sort of most practical and useful choice when it's come to lugging boxes around or moving furniture between my old place and the storage facility, etc. So it is good to be out in this thing today, getting to grips with it, learning about it and getting it filthy. I really am tempted to not wash this car once until I hand it back to Alexander's Prestige in another two and a half months time. I'm not sure how happy they'll be about that, but knowing Andrew like I do, I think he would totally approve. But anyway, there's plenty more content to come with this car. I got some really fun videos planned with it, so plenty of time to get to grips with it and try it in loads of different situations. Now, before I get to Kudos, let me quickly tell you about today's video sponsor, Cronext. Uh, now, I have spoken about Cronext before when I admitted that I'm kind of like a, a serial window shopper when it comes to buying watches online. And I use Cronext a lot because they've got like over 7,000 watches from 49 different makes. Uh, but better than that, every watch they get in goes through a kind of authentication process in their workshop, meaning that you get a 24-month warranty if you buy a watch from Cronext. But even better than that, for someone like me, as I say, a serial your window shopper I can kind of try before I buy you can pick one of the Cronex kind of delivery locations to get a watch sent to go check it out inspect it and then if you're happy you pay then and there so yeah, as I say, you can just endlessly try different watches before you finally decide on the one for you. Uh, very kindly, Cronex gave me a kind of discount code pre-Christmas, which was STG. They've decided to extend that because apparently lots of you have used it, which is great. So well done for all of you who got new watches at Christmas. But yeah, if you're interested in, in browsing, trying or buying a new watch, head over to Cronex. I'll put a link below and use that discount code STG. Oh my god. Uh. 
<laughs> Mate, I wasn't ready for that. Happy New Year. Cheers. And yourself? Happy New Year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'd seen obviously some of the pictures on Instagram over Christmas. Yeah, a couple of little teasers. And I was like, that's looking intense, but seeing it like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel. I'm not sure how I feel. I mean, okay, dare I ask how it's been going? Because, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it looks dramatic. Do I need to be worried about anything? Uh, no, no, good news. And there's a couple of bad news, as we, we hope, we're not hoping, we're expecting. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, a couple of parking dents. Okay, well, that, those I kind of knew about, yeah, right? One little bit of corrosion, which Ooh. I'll show you in a minute. Okay. But other than that, good news is, never been hit, never been crashed. She's all original. <laughs> No, I'm no wiping my brow. I, I'm not that surprised. I wasn't expecting accident damage. I, I, I knew about most dings and bings. Show me the corrosion. Is that front wheel arch? I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, near side front. Yeah. Uh, okay. Bad? No, 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 not bad at all. I mean, it's going to need a, a, a repair set oh, to put yeah. in it. Okay. Um, it's had, obviously, someone's been there before, and you can just see the filler work on it. Okay, um, so that's not actually awful because I think if I remember, this is where we saw some of the paint. There was something going yeah, on. Yeah, sort of almost chipping up or flaking. So, but yeah. I mean, this is one of the advantages of taking it back to bare metal. You do uncover areas that will need addressing. Fine. So if we didn't address that, for example, and you said just I don't want yeah. to do it with filler. It yeah, we would have gone back show. over it. Yeah, give it another six okay. months to a year or whenever it would have cracked and come back. So what we can do now is put a section of new material in. And then you're good then. Okay, fine. Okay, well that's I guess encouraging. <laughs> um, and then just things and things like yeah, that along yeah, the side. A, a previous little scrape through the bottom here, which someone filled out with a massive repair section who didn't need it. Okay. Uh, but we can dress that out now, and then you'll have minimal material in it. And then look. So this is. I mean, this is I guess the original paint somewhere lower down. There's yeah, there's your original etch, your original primer, and your original red. So the roof had only been done once actually. Okay. Um, the front had been painted I think three times, and then the rest of the car twice. Okay. I mean, you, as so, you would expect with a yeah. Ferrari. Of this age, I mean, when we it's the 308, wasn't it? That had about 15 That's different, yeah. Like, yeah so. now, the front ends always get no one likes stone chips, so they've always had a few more coats. Um, but other than that, yeah, no real, no real nasty. It's sort of terrifying, <laughs> shocking, but also quite beautiful in this oh, state. Artistic, yeah, it's a part of me who's like, oh, I'm gonna run around with a bare metal 360. Like. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I quite like it in this state. I mean, no one gets to see it when you actually, yeah. It's quite a nice way of looking at it. It's pretty amazing. So these little bits here, just what sort of more fiddly stuff that you haven't quite yeah, done the yet. Yeah, I've got a uh, screen guy coming in next week to take the front screen and the court windows out, and then we can also get the rest of the paint off, and then we can get a look and get it into primer. And is this is this the sort of longest and hardest part of the process? Like from here, is it? We're only on the way up. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Once you've got all the paint off, we can start priming it. Then yeah, it's, it's quite a straightforward, just a normal job. Then it, okay. it's quite time-consuming taking the paint off by hand. I can, well, um, as, as I said, I saw, I saw Chris <laughs> endlessly uploading um, yeah. over, over the holidays, just like, just chipping yeah, away, I'll see if I can overlay like that. that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely mad, but crazy to see. Well, I think I'm going to sort of, yeah, maybe take a few steps back and, and admire it in this state, or maybe let it sink in in this state. Uh, and then we're going to chat through, actually, what is sort of the more interesting or difficult parts of repainting a 360. I've got used to seeing this car like this, I think. But one thing I wanted to address, which a lot of you actually commented on in the first video, is one of the most difficult things or tricky parts of repainting and even vinyl wrapping a 360, and that is the headlights. So let me come over and chat to Chris, who's actually been slaving away on this car all through Christmas, mate. Can I just say, I'm not sure I appreciated your Instagram stories throughout <laughs> Christmas, because seeing yeah, the process of like basically peeling the paint off this yeah. car, I was like, oh, but... It's a, it's a bit shocking. Yeah, a bit shocking, but anyway, it, it's looking sort of stunning. I still can't decide. Um, okay. But let's talk, look, here, yeah. lights, because a lot of people obviously picked up on it, and I've always known, obviously 360 lights are painted, um, but behind the glass. Oh, that's, that's a, actually the name of my podcast. Oh, I'm on brand there. <laughs> so, uh, we always knew that this was part of the job, but is it something that sometimes people overlook? Is it tricky? It's difficult? Let's, it's, let's talk about lights, basically. It's not massively difficult. It's just time consuming. Getting the sealer to let go. Once you've got it, like heat it up, let it go, it, they come apart easy enough. 
then you're just left with all that to clean off. <laughs> all the grub. So I'm actually going to get some beautifully restored lights at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so because of, of course, factory paint was here like this, if you're ever doing anything to the bodywork, um, you're going to notice very quickly if the lights are a, a different colour. But also the lights do tend to fade over time. You, I mean, sometimes you get cars. Have you ever done just a light restoration? That would be a bit weird, wouldn't it? That would be a bit Yeah, okay, fine. I, I realize, as I was asking that question, that was a weird question. But I say lots of people are like, oh, what are you going to do about the lights? And it, it's why actually vinyl wrapping a 360 is so difficult. Because if you've got the body colored lights here and you had a red car and you want it to be yellow, you can't really vinyl wrap the lights. Maybe someone would try and Chris would look appalled. Um, but yeah, realistically, you're going to have to take them out and repaint them. And it is a, it's a long, tedious process, which this man has very kindly agreed to take on. Um, not that he didn't have enough work to do with all the body work. Um, but yeah, but just to address, we are getting them done. And then, of course, it means that the lights and the body work fully refreshed and all the same colour. So I, I know you've got a lot to do, so I'll, I'll leave you to it. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Um, but yeah, so whilst there's obviously a little bit of the repair to the corrosion, the dings and things like that. Few other little bits which we're going to be having a look at. Now, badges is something I want to talk about. I like the fact that my, my crests are a little bit sort of aged, a little bit sort of worn. They've got some character, they show some, they show some of the adventures of the card. So whilst the bodywork is going to be kind of like fully restored and we're going to have the light, the same colour, all these different elements, I quite like the fact that these have a little bit of a story to them. They could be replaced. I think it might be going too hard or hardcore in the sort of concord level. Uh, everything else should all go back on fairly easily. And then, yeah, I guess in not that too long a shape, I'll be able to click my fingers and this car will have been transformed. Actually, should we film that now? And, and obviously the, the transition will come later. I laugh and joke about the fact that it's a bit weird and slightly unnerving seeing my car like this, but, but it's actually quite amazing. It's why I was so excited about doing this kind of bare metal restoration slash paint job. I get to see the car in a, in a way that really no owner probably expects to or, or would want to see their car. It's, it's brutal, but kind of insane. And look at it here next to a 275 in the same shape. And it's like, wow, I feel like I've almost gone back in time to the Ferrari factory as a sort of uh, Ferrari nerd and also a lover of my own car. It's an amazing experience and I'm blown away by the work the, the guys down here at Kudos are doing and the sort of attention to details and the levels that they're going through and you know fundamentally how sort of confident they are with the whole process because I'm looking at that being like oh my god are you sure it's going to be put back together all right? <laughs> but yeah they definitely know what they're doing when they're working on cars like this right next to my own. Um, but fundamentally we're still relatively early on in the process. Uh, the car will probably be starting to take shape once again in around a month's time. Now of course I'm going to be coming back down here to kind of capture the process not only on camera but also in my mind I don't really expect to ever have to or want to fully repaint this car again so this is a real sort of once in a lifetime opportunity for me and, and this car um, but it has now turned 20 years old if you're wondering why are you doing this Sam well firstly I think that small patch of corrosion has finally proven why I wanted to go through this process but also to remind you it's to celebrate this car's 20th birthday it was made in 2002 it's now 2022 so as soon as it's back together ready to hit the road which will probably be sort of mid to late february i will be doing just that and and doing a whole load of adventures in this car and it's kind of renewed form but anyway for now i'm going to get out of here because the guys are super busy not only with my car but with all the projects they've got knocking around in here so let's jump back in the defender and head slowly back towards london If you're thinking it's looking a little bit different downstairs at STG HQ these days, you're not wrong. Some changes have taken place in recent weeks or maybe even months. I'm going to talk about it more on my podcast, Behind the Glass, in the sort of weeks ahead. But essentially, as I mentioned right at the start of this video, as the world has opened up over the last six to nine months, how I'm using the studio has changed quite a lot. And I'm not really using this downstairs space 
that much you will have noticed in videos i don't really tend to film down here very much anymore so yeah we've kind of changed how it's being used as i say i'll explain more about it in the podcast but i've got a few other things that i want to line up first but for now i'm tucking the defender safely up here down here mumbling my words a bit because i've got to take the f type now back to my parents which is two hours outside of london because tomorrow i need to use that car like I'm juggling a lot of cars at the minute. I feel a bit like a Shmi 150 or a JWW or, I don't know, DDE or something like that. It's all a bit mad. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Today's update is, say, a bit of an unexpected garage update, but fundamentally an update on the Ferrari 360 paint. Cannot wait to see how that turns out. Give it a thumbs up if you have enjoyed the video, and make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.